Well, good day, tubes. No, I was not like just sitting here. I wasn't sure if the camera's going. <laughs> but anyways, iPhone is fixed. I had to go over to the Apple store in the mall over in Newmarket, Ontario. And I uh, had to make an appointment. Busy friggin' store there, let me tell you. Holy, it's like, it's like going to the movies with like a whole whack of people just standing around. A lot of people helping you too, which is nice. Um, we got the screen replaced on my phone, if you remember yesterday's video. I dropped my phone on the weekend there and it just shattered, stupid thing. So we got her fixed, um, cost me some money. I do have my device protection on this phone through Rogers, but I went on there and you gotta go on a website. I actually went over to the Rogers store, which is just across the road over here where I got this thing from and uh, was going to get them to set it up and do it for me. Oh, no, we don't do that here, sir. you got to go on to the call the Rogers 1-800 number, or you got to go online on this rogers.com slash protection. So I did that. I went on the protection and uh, protection website, and I'm like, holy friggin' crap, I ain't got time to sit here and do all this crap. They wanted you to sign affidavits and uh, provide your proof of purchase and your... Basically, your left something, left kidney, just to get them to replace this phone. And I'm like, I, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> so, uh, then you got to mail them all this stuff. You got to print all this stuff off. You got to mail that into them. And uh, once they get it there, they got to make sure you got all your, even your proof of like ID and all this crap. It's like, really? I guess there's a lot of people trying to scam them, right? So, they want you to uh, give all this proof and stuff to make sure that you are you. So I'm like, forget this crap. I ain't got time for this. So I thought, okay, let's forget this. <laughs> so I thought there's a guy in the mall over here. He does uh, repairs and stuff. I thought, oh, maybe we'll take it to him. And my wife says, oh, I've heard a lot of good things about him. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I was back there weed whacking. I got her looking into stuff. And she's like, uh, the Apple store over Newmarket will fix it. I'm like, oh, okay. That's a good idea. I never thought of that. Take her back there. So uh, she's like, oh, but you got to make an appointment. I'm like, oh, frig, here we go, next week sometime. So talk to, uh, the light's okay. Sorry, I was looking at the light. Uh, she talked to them over there. And, oh, we can get you uh, an appointment at 3.30 today. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we ended up taking off over there this afternoon and uh, got it there like, oh, what time was it? About... 10 to 3, I guess. And the guy come up, can I help you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, we got an appointment for 3.30 to uh, get my phone fixed here. Oh, okay, uh, we should be able to get you in now. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> they got like tech guys back in there back there, I guess, right? So just constantly fixing phones and iPads and, you know, all the stuff. So there's another lady there. I felt bad for her too. She had a smashed up screen and stuff. And she's like, this is my third one. I'm like, oh. So... I thought, I uh, looked around, looked around, I didn't have a case, right, for my phone, so I thought, okay, I'm going to find a good case here today. Really don't care how much the case costs, as long as it works. So, we got a case. I'll show you here. I guess I've got to switch, switch cameras. We're right back. So I got this life proof, especially for iPhone 5C screenless technology and it is waterproof we are gonna test that out <laughs> supposed to be waterproof dirt proof snow proof and shock proof now where do they say that was that's sticking down to my Jeep there must be something in the back there see that it's actually stuck down to my Jeep Oh, okay, so fully submersible. Um, hang on, focus. Fully, fully submersible to 6.6 .6 foot, totally sealed from dirt and dust, completely closed to snow and ice. Survives drops from 6.6 .6 feet. Well, I don't really want to test the uh, drop thing because I've already tested that and uh, I didn't like that result. So, what the heck's in there? That's magnet. Magnetize. Yeah, let's see here. Well, maybe the box is too heavy, but there, see? <laughs> uh, so, anyways, I um, really hope that they're uh, truly honest with the uh, 
waterproof here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. Here we go. Well, just before we do the uh, water test, this is actually the case. I took it all apart again here. So there's a rubber. Whoa, whoa. Focus on this. There's a rubber dewy all on the inside here, right? And then your screen actually faces out here, and it's still actually the glass part of your screen, but it's waterproof, right? Because there's no openings in the glass. And uh, this covers your cameras and stuff on that side. And then this one is the one you put on the back. So it actually goes on here, and this has got a rubber, a rubber dewy all in around side there too, right? And that actually encases her inside there. So we're going to put her back in here. And uh, try to do her as we're doing it. And, uh, oh, I should have showed you the little rubber plug. There's a little rubber plug that goes, um, hang on. It's going to be loud. Snap it all back on here. It does fit really good. And we lock. And then we just lock her down and screw in the little earplug thing. I'll show you this other thing that come with here. It's pretty cool. This is your, your earplug dewy. And to keep it watertight again, you could actually plug this on. Um, okay. So this actually goes in your ear dewy and then you screw this in. There's a little o-ring there to keep her from getting wet. So I doubt I'll probably use that. But anyways, so I'll leave her in the box. So... We are going to try the big water test. I hope you guys uh, can swim. Okay, so we're going for a swim, boys. There it is. Nice knowing you. Are you good? I think so. Sweet. I think you survived. Want to try it again? good did you get wet <laughs> i hope not so far so good it's still working that's good hey you're still a uh, lot dry ish seems to work i'm a bit nervous because it looks all wet and stuff around everything but looks okay <laughs> so anyways uh to run over there oh i gotta See what's magnetizing here. To run over there today to Newmarket, I had to either go on the motorcycle or put that new tie rod in on the car. So I chose to put the tie rod on on the car, and it literally took me about 10 minutes, five minutes to jack it up, get the tire off, <laughs> put the impact underneath, brrr, took the nut off the bottom, broke free the uh, little jam nut, unscrewed the joint, put the new joint on, put the uh, uh, put it through the the knuckle and then brrr, that on tight again and there's actually this one was a little different the other one didn't have the little cotter key and stuff so this one did so we cotter keyed it and uh put put her back on jammed on that down and uh, away we went and it was pretty wore out i'll show you that when we're down the garage next she was pretty pretty bad pretty bad it's pretty bad so but uh, anywho i'm just gonna pull this box apart here and see what's so magnetized kind of weird well i can see these couple little magnets right here and i don't I don't really know what they're for, but they are sort of stuck on. But, um, hey, a couple of little free magnets would be good for some, wouldn't they? They're kind of glued in there, but maybe it's something to do with their security stuff. I bet you that's what it is. Here. Little, little magnets. Ugh. Oh, yeah, and I finally got the pool set up correctly. I tested her this morning. It was a little low on the chlorine, but the chlorine that comes and goes so fast out of the water. Oops, sorry. Um, and the pH was bang perfect right on. Ideal. I'm like, sweet, finally. <laughs> so, we got her. So I'm going to put all this away. Yeah, this little tag was in here too. Your case is water tested and ready to go. For plant water use, see water test instructions. This actually comes with a, a little fake 
iPhone dewy looking thing, you can put that on there and I guess if this comes out wet then don't use her. Come with a little wiper dewy even. Life proof wiper dewy. A little manual and then oh crap. That's a little extra protector screen thing you can put on to keep the scratches off your, your new dewy which I'll probably put on but no my screen's all wet. But anyways that's going to be it for today. Uh, I hadn't really got up too much. I did some weed whacking this morning which was good but then I kind of I don't know what happened, but the part of the head on my weed whacker thing like fell apart and it just, I don't know, blew apart or something. The whole thing didn't blow apart, but it just lost a hunk. So I got extra bits, so I'll have to fix that later, but she's no no biggie. So uh, anyways, uh, I think that's it. Not much else going on. I still got to work on this stupid freaking truck again, which... Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> Which I might as well pull this stupid box off again because I got to get right underneath there and fix that freaking line. So, after fixing that line, that is the last line that is on this truck. Everything else is brand new. We've done the one line that comes up from that little ABS box, goes up and then it goes across to this side. It feeds that side too. I think that was the double one. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, the only one I guess I haven't done is actually the ones that come back off the main master cylinder. I don't think I ever did them. Comes back and feeds that distribution box. And that one comes up and, yeah, it used to go around the front, but I wired it to go up here and around, I think. Uh, I think now. The two on the, the one that goes, oh, I can't even remember, this is horrible. Oh. The one that comes out of the main, that goes back to split, that's the one i got to repair, that's right. And then I've done the, the two that were crunchy back here. Goes to that little distribution T, one goes to that side, one comes to this side. They're both done. And let me actually pop the hood here for a sec. There's my old spare. Crap. A new spare. Can't believe someone didn't steal it. Anyways. I was about ready to give this truck to anybody that wanted her when I was up there. I don't freaking tell me that much. <clears throat> oh, there was some words said, I'll tell you, boys. Yes, I haven't redone these ones yet. I don't think I ever did them. And they're the ones that go back. I'm trying to think now. Oh, yeah, that's right. I fixed that one to here. You can see the, the joiner dewy there. That's right. And that other one didn't look too bad, and it still doesn't really look too bad, but it probably should be done. <laughs> That's right, I do remember doing that now. And then the one that comes, it used to come up the rail here, and then around and down underneath, and then over across to this side. I've redone that one, but I rerouted it, went around through the frame and up this way. That's right. And you can just see her right there, I think, that green line. Down in here, that's the new one. Look at it already down here. Come on, focus. Already started to get corroded and crappy. Isn't that awful? This stuff they're spraying on the road, this brine stuff, it's just freaking horrible. Freaking horrible. I can't remember now how I repaired that line. Putting that joiner and that extra new piece on. I think I actually took it right off the main cylinder here. I can't remember now. That would have leaked out like crazy. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's good anyways. It should be fine. But, oh, this, this, yeah, like I say, this brine stuff that they're spraying on the road, I don't know really what it is, but it is horrible on any exposed metal or something that's started to break through now. Oh, it's just going to make, I'm wondering if they've kind of planned that. You know, so, uh, look at, there's a, there's a broken wire there I just found, probably for this light. Looks like, yeah. There was an extra one there that was probably should have ran through and then grounded there. That's probably why the light doesn't work. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although that should get. Yeah, I guess the wire's broken. I don't know. It comes up here somewhere. I haven't really worried about that too much because I usually have my phone with a better light than that stupid thing would be. Stupid idea that was. But, anyways, I'm going to have to trace that one back. It doesn't look too bad, this one, but that's also what I said about that other line. But they're not as bad flaky. Like that other one was just horrible. But anyways, that's going to be a NAR, NAR project for a NAR, NAR day. But anyways, that is it for today. I'm heading in. Oh. 
you guys have a good night. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you. Oh, hi, Chip. Hi, Chip. Chip, 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 chip. Oh, gone. But anyways, oh, yeah. We got this joint fixed today. That's right. I don't really show you much on that, but it is sort of in behind that tire. And, uh, yeah, that's about all I can show you. So, that was a Moog. M-O-O-G or Moog. I think I put back on there, so it, uh, apparently has a good name, so hopefully she's good. I'm hitting her in. You guys have a good night tomorrow. I don't know what the heck's going on. Uh, I got drafts to do and stuff, and when I'm going to get to this stupid truck, I don't know. It's just really, really ticked me off for a little while, I think. <laughs> All that work we put into it, and get way the frick up in the middle of nowhere, like two and a half hours northwest of me here. You get way up there, there's Mennonites, or they call them Mennonites here, I guess you call them Amish or something, where maybe some of you are, you know, the horse and buggy people. And there's nothing open up there. All you get up there is a bunch of men sitting around talking in their nice Sunday bests and the kids out front playing and their best Sunday bests and the women inside making lunch for everybody else. <laughs> you know, that's all you get way up there and that's it. So... I did do some research though. I did find on the Canadian Tire website, Canadian Tires that were open with their auto center was Owen Sound had theirs open, which was about 45 kilometers back east, no south or north. It's pretty much just back east from where we were up there, which we could have probably got to and maybe got them to fix it. Or Orangeville was the only other one that wasn't more south. If I go more south, I might as well just come home. Um, so, yeah, Owen Sound or Orangeville has an auto center that was open from 9 till 4. So, that's not really too helpful. You know, if you're way up there, especially on holidays and your vehicle breaks down, you know, we weren't necessarily on holidays, but we could have stayed in there night if we had to. But just the nuisance of, you know, it'd be different if it was like a, a muffler hanging off or something not a huge deal yeah you probably should have her fixed but when it's your braking for your vehicle that's pretty major and technically yes I shouldn't have been driving it like that but I did have some brake um, it's just there's a separate units right for the fronts and the rear brakes while well, the rears have lost all their pressure so as soon as you push it it's trying to put more pressure to that brake and it's just basically pumping it straight through but if I put her right to the floor which pumps a lot of fluid out of that bad line Right to the floor, the front brakes kind of come on a little bit. Now, if I had to stop an emergency, I would have been totally screwed. But it's like, you know, I stayed back as far as I could. And didn't go hardly at all over 80, which took a long time to get home. And uh, I had to drive extremely defensively. <laughs> I'm really not used to that. You know, you're used to just hammering on the brakes and it just stops you right dead usually, right? Well, yeah, this is like really bad. So it was really bad. <laughs> So it's a good way to uh, totally exchange all the fluid in the system again, I guess, because I probably put... Actually, I didn't go through as much as I thought I would have. I got that big, huge jug of it. I think you saw maybe a quick little shot of her in the back there. And then I had my small jug, because I was still kind of keeping an eye on the level and stuff from, from the work I was doing before, right? So I kept the jug with me, so kind of a good thing I did. But that was an almost out jug, so I probably put maybe two liters through the whole thing which isn't really too bad but that does have a pretty huge reservoir on it which was nice it holds a lot so it probably holds I don't know a liter itself on the uh, reservoir on that thing so that was good but I don't know freaking why they build these things they know it's gonna be sold in Canada like 98% probably sure is gonna be sold in Canada they put salt on the roads up here why would they put steel lines on it uh, uh, stainless steel I'm sure would be just as strong as regular steel if probably not a bit stronger stainless steel you ever tried to cut stainless steel versus regular steel yeah that's a big difference there why they don't put stainless steel lines on it and maybe the stainless steel would react with like the brass fittings or whatever it is the bronze fittings that they put on in brass I think they are maybe they would react and then start corroding and falling apart I don't know but it's like really like if that was stainless steel it would have never rusted at all <laughs> It would still be like brand new day one but maybe the stainless steel is harder to bend too into the shapes and you know around the forms and all that stuff maybe it doesn't bend as well i don't know stainless steel is a lot different material than regular steel i know that so but anyways uh yeah i don't know 
or do like the car does and they're like a plastic coated those will still be like brand new lines if you shredded off the coating off the outside of those they'll probably never ever ever give you a grief the car will be wore out probably before there's even you know not even rusted at all so i know it costs a lot more it costs a bit more but you know I, i'd gladly pay a thousand dollars more if you put like reliable bits onto it you know like you know, I don't know how much more a plastic coated line would cost more than just regular steel, but a thousand bucks? That's pretty cheap compared to where you could get screwed, you know, so I don't know. It's the way they work, I guess, so <laughs> what can you do? Can't do anything about her. So, yeah, but um, this uh, stuff I've got, the green stuff, is supposed to be better than just the, it's a, it's a coated stuff, but uh, I can see there already it started to corrode. So then they have a um, the other stuff I got for the very back, I'll have to, well, I haven't had any crappy bad weather I've been driving in, but it's supposed to be even better. And it's like, a, oh, it's coated with something else. I can't remember what he, nickel or nickel coated. That's right. It was nickel coated. And uh, apparently it's not supposed to rust. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I bet you it'll rust. But um, yeah, other than that, uh, got the car fixed again, so it's good. I think I might have a balancing problem in some of the tires or one of the tires. It seems to be bouncing a lot, so I don't know. I, I don't know. Freaking cars. Ah, oh, you just hate cars. <laughs> they're good until you drive them off the showroom floor and then they're freaking crap. But anyways, that's enough babbling for me. I'm going to head her in. We'll catch you later. Have a good night. And uh, tomorrow, like I say, I, I don't really know what's going on, but uh, I'll probably just get into some mowing and that'll probably be it. I don't even know if I'll get a, a something up for you. We'll see. But have a good night. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you when we catch you.